Hello, my name is Katie and welcome to my physical TBR shelf tour. There are three shelves here but you can't see the bottom one from this angle but we will get there. Full disclosure, I've already filmed this once and I absolutely hated the footage that came out of it so we're doing it again. Some of these books may be a little controversial. I enjoy controversial books. When I disagree with something, I like to know what I'm disagreeing with from the source. So if you see some stuff on here and you think that I'm a terrible person for owning said book, that's fine. Go ahead and feel that way, I guess. Um, but the, the reasoning behind it is that I don't like to just disagree with things based on what I've heard or what other people have said, especially if it's a topic that I'm interested in in general. So please don't take offense to any of these. If you do, um, I guess I'll either see you in a different video or you'll unsubscribe and I'll never see you again and that's, you know, that that's your decision. <laughs> So I suppose we should just get into it now that we've gotten all that out of the way. On top of the shelf here, I have my middle grade and young adult that I haven't read. I have uh, the His Dark Materials trilogy. I have Hatchet, The Diviners by Libba Bray, The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan, and There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. I have actually read Hatchet, but not since I was a child, and I really loved this copy. So I went ahead and bought it and thought maybe I could do a reread, but it's been like a year and the reread hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Starting with the first shelf here, uh, this entire top shelf is going to be just adult books that I haven't read. They all should be fiction, but occasionally stuff gets mixed up, and I just, uh, I don't have the time or the patience to go through things all the time and verify that things are where they need to be. In general, these should be in alphabetical order, but some of the books on the top may kind of uh, not really be alphabetically where they should go. Those sometimes kind of just get shoved up there. Uh, I have Nightfall and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov, Afterland by Lauren Bukes, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, The Alienist by Caleb Carr, City of Brass by S.A. Shakaborty, The Secret Chapter by Genevieve Cogman. I have books 6 and 8 of the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. I'm not totally sure how I got books 6 and 8. Although I did pick up book seven this month, it's just in a pile for a book haul. Um, and then I also have The Passage by Justin Cronin. At the top here, I have The Awakening and Selected Short Fiction by Kate Chopin and Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. I've never read Gulliver's Travels, although if you can see, I did start it at some point. However, there was a movie based on the book that I watched several times as a child and really loved it, so I thought maybe I should read the book. Next I have House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue, Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, Right Behind You by Lisa Gardner, The Last Tutor by Philippa Gregory, A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hassini, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, I have Mr. Mercedes and the Outsider by Stephen King, Confessions of a Domestic Failure, and I don't know how to pronounce this author's name, so I'm just going to show you rather than butcher it and embarrass myself. I have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, Noir by Christopher Moore, and then up here I have 
The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. Also a book that I started at one point and then never did anything with. I have Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. Humans Bow Down by James Patterson. I'm actually curious to read this one because I've seen like the majority of reviews on Goodreads for it are terrible. Which is partly why I want to read it. Anthem by Ayn Rand. Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. The Impossible Fortress by Jason Rakulik. Here, I'll just show you. I have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I know Sanderson is like the premier fantasy writer of our time. Everybody always talks about him. I've never heard anybody complain about his work. Which is why I have Warbreaker. I read Elantris by him. And I chose that one because it's a standalone. And I'm not sure if I want to get into a large series, which is pretty much everything he has. So let me know if you have any thoughts on Brandon Sanderson and where to start. I have Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. This was a book that I bought on a friend's recommendation like six years ago and I still haven't read it. It's terrible. I have The Marriage Game by Alison Weir and What the Hell Did I Just Read by David Wong. I bought this when I was at the last bookstore in Los Angeles and I thought the title was so funny that I had to pick it up but then I recently realized that this is book three in a series and I'm not sure what I want to do now. The books I have stacked up top here I have The No Fear Shakespeare, The Tempest, Macbeth, and A Midsummer's Night's Dream and then I also have, oh god, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I'm not sure how well you can see the titles here but I'm doing my best. All the books are weird heights, so I'm trying to get as much in as I can. Uh, this is where my nonfiction begins. Starting with The Secret History of the World by Mark Booth, Washington, The Making of the American Capital by, I think that says Fergus M. Bordwich, Alexander Hamilton, Revolutionary by somebody. Martha Brockenborough, How the Irish Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill, Tesla by Nigel Cawthorn. I actually have, oh gosh, probably a total of three biographies on Nikola Tesla. He is one of my favorite historical people ever. We Were Eight Years in Power by ta Coates. I'm really thinking I need to get to this one soon. I don't know why I haven't picked it up already. A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies, and Leadership by James Comey. The Quantum Rules by Kunal K. Das. On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. I do believe I have read this but not all the way through. I think I've read bits and pieces over the years. I've read like half of it, put it down, later read another half. So I, I want to actually sit down and, and read it start to finish. I have The Space Sparrows by Christian Davenport. I have An Appetite for Wonder, Science in the Soul, and The Selfish Gene, all by Richard Dawkins. I have The Book of Firsts, 150 World-Changing People and Events from Caesar Augustus to the Internet by Peter DePiro. The Brain by David Eagleman. How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg. American Radical by Tamar Anuri. How to Read Literature Like a Professor, A Lively and Entertaining Guide to Reading Between the Lines by Thomas C. Foster. The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, The New Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan, and The Book That Changed America by Randall Fuller. Then up top here I have 
God, A Human History by Riza Aslan. And I have Math and the Mona Lisa, The Art and Science of Leonardo da Vinci by a person whose name I definitely can't pronounce. Uh, the next shelf I have On Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis. I have A Passion for Leadership by Robert M. Gates. I have I War, War and Peace in the Information Age by Bill Gertz. As I See It, The Autobiography of J. Paul Getty. The Hemingses of Monticello, An American Family by Annette Gordon-Reed. 101 Myths of the Bible, How Ancient Scribes Invented Biblical History by Gary Greenberg. The Fabric of the Cosmos, Space, Time, and the Texture of Reality by Brian Greene. Alexander the Great by John Gunther. I'm not even sure where I got this book. And I'm kind of thinking it's not going to be that good. Oh, actually, in Sirlik High School, I think this came from when my husband was stationed in Turkey. I think they were, like, getting rid of books, so he picked a few up that he thought I might want to read. Uh, on top of those books, I have The Inventions, Researches, and Writings of Nikola Tesla. I think this is just a Barnes & Noble edition, because it doesn't actually have an author anywhere. And it doesn't have as many pictures as I would like. But eventually I'll get to it. Moving down slightly, I have Mythology by Edith Hamilton. This is like a really popular book on mythology, I guess. I've seen a lot of people who have it. I have On Intelligence. How a New Understanding of the Brain Will Lead to the Creation of Truly Intelligent Machines by Jeff Hawkins. I have kind of a passion for artificial intelligence. I'm not as afraid of it as most people seem to be. I have The Bell Curve, Intelligence and Class Structure in America Life by Richard J. Herrnstein and Charles Murray. This is one of those controversial books that I was talking about. I heard Charles Murray on a podcast a couple years ago. I think Herrnstein is dead. Um, anyway, he was discussing this work. Um, because it's what most people want to talk to him about. And a lot of the a lot of the the questions that I had, mostly about why he was studying this in the first place and why he went about his research in the way he did and why he came to the conclusions that he did, um, he wasn't really answering, at least not satisfactorily. So I thought I'd just pick up the dang book and read it. I'll get to it eventually. Maybe. I have The Buried and Archaeology of the Egyptian Revolution by Peter Hessler. And Yet by Christopher Hitchens. It's just a book of his essays. I think I got it really cheap at Barnes & Noble. Black Man, White House by D.L. Hewley. Leonardo da Vinci by Walter Isaacson. This is probably the heaviest book I own. I remember picking it up off the shelf and almost dropping it because I wasn't prepared. I have White Trash, The 400-Year Untold History of Class in America by Nancy Eisenberg. I recently heard um, Rosie, I'll, I'll link her channel down below, um, she also had this book on a non-fiction TBR video that she did, and she said she had started it and it wasn't really clicking with her. So now I'm a little bit nervous to read it, but I'm keeping it all the same. I have <laughs> Assholes, A Theory by Aaron James, and I bought this just because the title made me laugh. I have The Future of Humanity, Terraforming Mars, Interstellar Travel, Immortality, and Our Destiny Beyond Earth by Michio Kaku. I have several more of his books on the next shelf down, so you'll see those in a minute. And sitting on the top, I have Backstage at the Lincoln Assassination, The Untold Story of the Actors and Stagehands at Ford's Theater by Thomas A. Bogar. I'm pretty sure I got this at the Lincoln Memorial. It would make sense. This shelf here is too low to use the tripod, so I'm just going to hold it, the camera, and uh, 
hopefully it's not too shaky. I have the rest of my Michio Kaku books, Hyperspace, a Scientific Odyssey through Parallel Universes, Time Warps, and the Tenth Dimension. Parallel Worlds, A Journey Through Creation, Higher Dimensions, and the Future of the Cosmos. And Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny in Our Daily Lives by the Year 2100. I have Tightrope, Americans Reaching for Hope by Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Voudin. I have two books by Eric Larson, In the Garden of Beasts and The Splendid in the Vial. I have Decoding Andean Mythology by... Margarita B. Marindale? I think I got this at a museum in Washington, D.C., but I honestly cannot remember which one. I have Status Update, Celebrity, Publicity, and Branding in the Social Media Age by Alice E. Marwick. I got this for school for something, I think, and then never did anything with it. Who thought this was a good idea and other questions you should have answers to when you work in the White House by Alyssa Mastromonico. And then sitting on the top, I have Turn Right at Machu Picchu, Rediscovering the Lost City One Step at a Time by Mark Adams. I think I also got this at the same museum as Decoding Andean Mythology. And then... I have Away at War, A Civil War Story of the Family Left Behind by Nick K. Adams. Um, Nick Adams was, he was sitting at a Barnes & Noble that I went to. And he had both these, he had this book and then one other. And what they are is he discovered that passed down in his family through the generations, they had letters from an ancestor of his who was in the Civil War. And so he published a book that was the letters between the husband and wife while he was away. And then he also, as like a companion, wrote this book, which is based on the letters and also like a diary or something that the wife kept. So I gave the, the other book to my dad and then I kept this one. I think, yeah, I even have it signed. Moving on over, I have You Are Not So Smart and You Are Now Less Dumb by David McRaney. I bought these at a store. I don't even know if it exists anymore. It was called Marbles, the Brain Store. And it had like books and games and puzzles and things. It was a really neat store. I have The Soul of America by John Meacham. Creepy Crawling, Charles Manson and the Many Lives of America's Most Infamous Family by Jeffrey Melnick. I bought this a couple years ago when I was going through um, a true crime phase and then like quickly fell out of said phase and it's just been sitting here ever since. I have the spinning magnet, the electromagnetic force that created the modern world and could destroy it by Alana Mitchell. What If? Serious Scientific Answers to Absurd Hypothetical Questions by Randall Monroe. I really should read this soon because I think, yeah, it's a lot of like pictures and stuff too. So there's not actually a ton of words. I have Everything All at Once by Bill Nye. The Audacity of Hope and Dreams from My Father, A Story of Race and Inheritance, both by Barack Obama. The Day the World Went Nuclear by Bill O'Reilly. Creative Quest by Questlove. I'm not totally sure what this is about. I honestly think I just liked the cover. Mrs. Sherlock Holmes, the true story of New York City's greatest female detective and the 1917 missing girl case that captivated a nation by Brad Rica. This uh, is a book my mom recommended. Stiff, the curious lives of human cadavers by Mary Roach. Reality is not what it seems by Carla Rovelli. I actually apparently started this one and never did anything with it. I have Cosmos by Carl Sagan, 
30 second brain, the 50 most mind blowing ideas in neuroscience, each explained in half a minute. Very good for me because half a minute is about my attention span. I have In the Kingdom of Ice, The Grand and Terrible Polar Voyage of the USS Jeanette by Hampton Sides. And then at the top here, I have two books that I picked up when I was in Alcatraz. I have Alcatraz Escape Files, which has really cool pictures. And I have Letters from Alcatraz, a collection of letters, writings, and views from Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, Mickey Cohen, legendary fugitive James Whitey Bulger, Alvin Karpis, and many other Alcatraz inmates, family members, and prison officials. The final shelf, and thank God because I've been filming for a while, I have Rasputin, Faith, Power, and the Twilight of the Romanovs, Einstein's Unfinished Revolution by Lee Smolin, The Road to Unfreedom by Timothy Snyder, Word by Word, the Secret Life of Dictionaries by Corey Stamper. The Annotated Turing. Letters from an Astrophysicist by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Eleanor of Aquitaine by Alison Weir, which I should probably read soon. The Warmth of Other Suns, the sto Epic Story of America's Great Migration by Isabel Wilkerson. The Origins of Creativity by Edward O. Wilson, which has one of the coolest covers I have ever seen. Worlds to Explore, Classic Tales of Travel and Adventure from National Geographic. And this book I got, <laughs> it's gonna suck. I don't know if I'm ever gonna read it, <laughs> but it, it made me laugh. The Sagan Conspiracy, NASA's untold plot to suppress the people's scientist theory of ancient aliens. And that is it. Those are all the books on my physical TBR, except um, for the stack of books that I've bought in the last month or so. Those are sitting in a pile because I'm, I'm waiting to do a book haul. So yeah, if uh, there's anything on here that you've read and think maybe I should prioritize, please let me know. If you like my content, uh, consider subscribing stick around. I'd love to see you in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.